Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the AEW review for uh, the 7th of October, 2020. Awesome show last night, a lot of things that I enjoyed. AEW continues to prove on the heels of its one year anniversary that it is by far the best wrestling product in North America. Um, I'd say the world, but I don't watch Japan enough to, to, to say that confidently, but definitely the best wrestling prog uh, product in North America worth going out of your way to see. Really looking forward to the the um, anniversary show uh, next week. And so uh, the show opens with a video package and um, various members of the roster put over Chris Jericho as a legend. They do the uh, Jericho 30-year anniversary thing, which I understand now in the finish and having the night to think about it, why... They put the Jericho thing in the main event slot. It's not what I would have done, but I understand the reasoning behind it. Jim Ross, Excalibur, and Tony Schiavone, Taz, and Ricky Starks are at the uh, are at the announce desk. Uh, Jim Ross messes up uh, and calls Ricky Starks, Ricky Skaggs. Uh, Kip Sabian, Miro, and Penelope Ford are playing an arcade game at ringside. We open with what is a really good match, Brian Cage defeating Will Hobbs. Hobbs proves that he belongs on a national stage. Really awesome to see a guy come out of nowhere. Proof that guys can get over if given an opportunity. He's green. He needs seasoning. Give him two or three years, and I think he'll be one of the best bigger men in, in the country. Um, Cage... Uh, is a guy who, it depends who he's in the ring with. These guys meshed well. I'm very touch and go on Brian Cage. I've seen him have amazing matches. I've seen him have horrible matches. And this was on the better side for him. So um, the announcers uh, acknowledge that Will Hobbs is, is fighting for his brother, who was tragically murdered. I know this is going to sound uh, horrible, but... I would make that a part of the underlying story in his main push. And when you finally put a championship on him, and he will get there, whether it's the TNT championship, a tag championship somewhere down the road, when you finally do that, he did it for his brother and his brother's memory and all people who were, you know, victims of unnecessary violence. I think there's a human interest story that goes so much deeper than than they've done in, in other wrestling scenarios. I'm not sure that this is the only guy who's ever had uh, a family member get murdered in wrestling, but I think it's the first time I've ever heard it, and I think there's a way to tell a human interest story out of that. Um, Cage cuts uh, Hobbs off, cuts him over. Uh, face buster for near fall. Hobbs comes back with a back suplex, and then a sit-out spine buster for near, near fall. I love Hobbs' spine buster. Um, always have, probably always will. Cage uses a pump handle driver, which was amazing. Uh, for near fall, they trade German suplexes, and Hobbs uses a second spine buster for a second near fall. Hobbs goes up, misses a frog splash. Cage, Cage hits the joke claw for a win. Post match, Ricky starts, joins Cage in the ring. Taz offers uh, Hobbs an, imp an opportunity because he found him to be impressive. Uh, he said he could join, he could join Team Taz or get beat up. Darby Allen enters, makes the save, threatening Cage and Starks with a skateboard. Taz says that Allen will learn not to stick his nose, nose into Team Taz business. I really would love to see, uh, a Will Hobbs tag team with Darby Allen. I think Allen is really good at stunt work. I think Alan is really good in the ring. I think his character doesn't give way to as many longer promos. And if if Will Hobbs can learn a promo in a way that connects with the audience, I think they'd be a really fun tag team. Uh, Slash Dennis Miller, Tanahashi, Bully Ray, and Ted Irvine all pay tribute to Jericho. Uh, Lance Archer sends in a video promo that doesn't doesn't age well or doesn't edit well. Uh, Archer said that he and Moxley have torn it down at a Texas death match earlier in the year in Japan. 
He says he learned a lot since then and promises to win the title next week. I'm not a fan of the idea of taking the title off of Moxley. At the same time, I wonder if doing that on the anniversary show doesn't at least give some notoriety to the anniversary show. I think in a new company, I think a yearly anniversary television show should be noteworthy. And I don't know where else you put you can have a major angle. And yes, I do, I do think for the first two or three years, every year the anniversary show should mean something. Um, anyway, the tag team championship match, uh, FDR defeats TH2. Um, Styles clash for the match. Uh, it speaks to why I believe that, that uh, TH2 is not ready for national television. I know that there are people that love them. I know that there are people that really enjoy their athletic ability. But if they can't have a good match with FTR, honestly, there's something wrong with the way they handle things. Young Bucks are shown backstage. Uh, They're watching the match in a weird way. Um, Nick Jackson is back on television. And... Uh, Evans and Angelico do get some offense early and, you know, Jim Ross is not a fan of, of the Excalibur, not the Excalibur, well, he shouldn't be a fan of Excalibur either, but he's not a fan of the, uh, the TH2 style and it comes across in his commentary. FDR cuts off Evans, uh, Blanchard takes the referee, FDR double teams, uh, Evans sells his legs, and Helico and Evans make a comeback, and Helico hits a near fall on an assisted 450. FDR comes back with dragon suplex combo after a German suplex. Um, Evans hits a moonsault for near fall. Cash makes a save, and Helico misses a dive, gets, hits the apron instead, thanks to an assist from Cash. Evans with a near fall and just has offense that is horrible. Um, Anyway, Dax hits Evan with a tiger driver for near fall. Dax hits a superplex on Evans. Cash hits a top rope splash for the pin. Not a good match. Um, And I don't think any of this can go to FTR. I think all of this is on the experience and style incompatibility with FTR. Um, anyway, Young Bucks, super kick a camera guy uh, after the match. Best friends are wearing weenie t-shirts. Uh, they n- announced that they'll get a tag title shot next week on Dynamite. Um, yeah, d- not a fan of this. And I really hope that the best friends are not squashed next week, but I think this is an opportunity to tell a story of FTR are wrestlers. They don't care about gimmicks, and I think they should decisively beat uh, Best Friends next week. So MJF sends in a tribute to Jericho. He says he's proud of Jericho and inspired by him. Shaquille O'Neal says that uh, Jericho's above a legend. Gene Simmons... And Don Callis and DDP all send in tributes. DDP calls him a brother. Uh, TNT Championship match is next. Cody, your first two-time TNT champion, defeats Mr. Brody Lee to win the title. Uh, Greg Valentine, who's not looking healthy, is in the crowd for the, um, the, the, the match because of the connection between the Piper and Valentine. Dog collar match from Stark 83. Nice historic tie in. Um, you know, uh, this certainly was a bloody brawl. I'm glad that Cody uh, does okay. Uh, John Silver and Anna J accompany Lee to the ring. I wish they were doing more with uh, Alex Reynolds instead. I wish they were doing more with Alan Angels instead. I don't see what people see in Silver. I don't know why Silver is uh, given as much TV time as he is, but that's a matter of personal preference. Uh, Silver takes a forearm 
and goes flying off the apron. apron. Silver bled. Uh, Anna Jay helps him to the back. Uh, Brody hits a boss man slam for a near fall. And both guys brawl around the ringside. Both guys get busted open. Lee threw a chair at Arn Anderson. I mean, he threw this thing Sabu style hard way. Arn goes into the ring. Alex Reynolds runs in. Arn hits Reynolds with a spine buster. Lee hits Arn with the chain in the in the midsection. Cody uses a cutter and a moonsault. Lee hits a kick and a power bomb for near fall. They do the chain hanging spot and a superplex. Not a fan because I've seen superplexes already on this show. Cody ducks a lariat. Cody uses the chain to deliver um, some shots and then hits a crossroads for the pin. Cody cuts an impassioned promo. Cody is the best, and I, I will not hesitate on this. Cody is the best babyface promo in North America in the last at least 10 years. Um, he's phenomenal. People, the independent guys should study Cody when it comes to promos. Anyway, Cody says he, he, people thought that since he's changed his hair, he should change his attitude and turn his back on the fans. Um, Cody says he's sticking with the people. And this is his life's work. Um, he, he, done, he basically says this is everything to him. He's waited to be this guy since he was 15 years old. Cody says he's going to defend the title next week. Orange Cassidy comes out on the stage. Cody gives him a thumbs up. Cody versus Cassidy for the title next week. Obviously, Cody's not going to drop it that quick. Um, I would have saved this. I would have given Cody a few victories and then had fun with this. I think pulling the trigger on the Orange Cassidy thing is too soon. Uh, and I, hmm, I, I wish they were thinking more, a little more long range with Orange Cassidy. I think they did really good work with him with Jericho. I think he needs to win a feud. I don't think him losing to Cody does his does him does him justice. Wardlow, Colt Cabana, and Hangman Page are added to the World Title Shot Tournament. Alex Marvez interviews Kenny Omega. Um, so Alex Marvez has the charisma of Chex Mix. Uh, and Kenny Omega is out there. Omega says that he uh, has won tournaments all over the world. He basically buries his former partner and says him that uh, Adam Page being in the tournament means nothing. Uh, Omega says he'll win the tournament and take the title off whoever the champion is. Oga, uh, uh, <laughs> Oga, that's awesome. I'm just going to call him Oga from now on. Anyway... Omega says that uh, Paige is nothing more than a tag team wrestler. I would love to see Paige win the tournament and then um, slip over on Omega in the final and then have them do a feud coming out of that. I don't again, I don't think you need to to switch the title right now. If it were me, I'd keep the belt on Moxley till a one year anniversary or right around it. That would be me, but who knows where they're going. Anyway, Big Swole. Big Swole defeats Serena Deeb. Not a fan of this. Deeb is more ready to be a star. Anyway, uh, you know, the the women's match placement, I think, is, is weak. I think it should have been earlier in the show. I don't think they could have followed Cody and, and Brody Lee. I don't think they could have followed um, anything here. So... You know, it, it's it's not a good place to be. Um, Swell and Deep try. There's nothing. This is a match that can be skipped. Uh, Deep is good, and um, there's a miscommunication, and Deep goes for a lariat, and uh, Swell's out of position. Deep's con in control before the commercial. Swole makes a comeback after the break. Uh, Swole hits a headbutt to the chest for near fall. Deeb applies a hold, but gets gets caught up in a pinning combination. Uh, tries to go for an underhook suplex. Swole blocks. Um, Swole hits a second headbutt to the chest and a rolling elbow for the pin. Not a fan of this. I was... 
high on swole, but the Britt Baker thing has really killed her off. Uh, John Moxley does a promo from a bar. Uh, Mo- Moxley says next week's the anniversary show. He doesn't have time to celebrate. He's always in motion. He's always going. There's always a challenger. Someone that will eventually knock him off. Maybe it'll be Archer. Moxley said he... Um, the last time he fought Archer, he barely left uh, with all his teeth. And he says it's a coin flip on whether he wins. He keeps the title. Um, Kip Sabian and Miro uh, in action next week. And Sir Panico and Luther enter for the main event. Uh, we get some more celebrity stuff. Lance Storm, Kevin Smith, Eli Roth, Gabriel Iglesias, Chavo Guerrero Jr., Steel Panther, Ultimo Dragon, and Paul Stanley all put over Jericho. Main event is next. Jericho and Hager with Santana Ortiz and Guevara defeated Luther and Serpentico. Um, this match was meant to set up the, the end angle and to celebrate Jericho. It wasn't meant to be a great match. I, I still would have flip-flopped this and put this uh, in a spot that wasn't the main event, but I get why they did it because they hyped Jericho so hard. Uh, Jericho and Luther trade shops. Jericho is t- is selling before a commercial. Um, Jericho hits a lion salt during the break. Hager gets in and out during the break. Serpentico and Luther make a comeback. Serpentico hits a uh, Tope, Luther hits a flip dive, which for a guy in his 50s is pretty impressive. Luther and Jericho have a brawl. Jericho calls for his baseball bat. Luther intercepts it and uses it for near fall. Guevara jumps on the apron. Jericho hits the Judas effects, pins Luther. Jericho starts to cut a promo post-match. He's interrupted by MJF. Uh, MJF says he's got a surprise for... for uh, Jericho, MJF reveals a clown and a framed Jer- a MJF poster f- as a gift for Jericho. Uh, Jericho, Judas affects the, the clown and breaks the poster over MJF's head, or over the, over the clown's head, I'm sorry. Uh, Jericho told M- MJF he hates clown and clowns and never to interrupt him again. Um, then... They laugh this off. Heel locker room enters and celebrate Jericho. They roll credits, and everyone listed in every position on the credits is Chris Jericho. Again, an awesome show. Worth seeing. And in comparison to NXT, like, this is ice cream versus horse manure, to, to quote Bobby Heenan. NXT was a very disjointed show off TakeOver, and um, that review will be up in a few minutes. But anyway... We'll be back with more right after this.